We have been playing a lot of Outriders since the launch, did a ton of the endgame content, got a world tier to the max level, but we did not do everything in the right order and also discovered a lot of helpful things that would have been nice to know earlier. So in this video I want to make sure that you do not make the same mistakes. So I will share a ton of tips on how to deal way more damage, survive longer by getting like way more health, getting amazing items faster, climb the challenge tiers, and way, way more. So if you like that, then a like on the video would of course really help me out, and let's go. Let's start with one key thing in Outriders, and that is that tier 3 perks are a game changer. You of course find these perks on a legendary, but maybe you're used to like keeping these legendaries, but you actually want to dismantle them so you can put these mods on other weapons and gear. And there are many reasons for that. One, it's not worth it to level up low level legendaries because it will cost you a ton of resources that you want to use later on in the game. There are some like small exceptions though. I really like my Inverno Seed so I do take it with me as I rank up and... Sure, if you have like an amazing legendary weapon that you use all the time, then it will be worth it to level that up. But for example, the Landlubber is pretty bad, especially on a Devastator, but it does have the amazing legendary Minefield perk. So this is even better than the regular Minefield Tier 2 perk that we discussed in our best mods video. Because instead of triggering on a kill, you trigger these mines on a crit. And the extra damage I do with this perk with my Inverno Seat is like insane. I'm almost like doubling my damage. The Winter Blast perk on the Iceberg Sniper is another amazing example of this. Because the Sniper is pretty bad. But being able to freeze enemies in a short area after dealing a crit is amazing. So dismantle the Sniper and put this tier 3 perk on a weapon that you do like to use. And that will really help you a ton during the end game. And there is, by the way, a guaranteed way to get the Land Lobber from the Big Iron Side mission. You find this mission in the Desolate Fort destination. Talk to Chenna in your camp. Not sure if it like opens up immediately after like clearing this area. Maybe only after finishing the game. Just see if it's there and then go complete it. It has you find three weapon parts in different areas. It's not that hard. Polygon did make a map though. So you can easily see where it is. The thing is that after completing this mission, you can choose one out of three legendaries, including the Landlubber with the legendary Minefield perk. So if you did not do this mission yet, totally complete it and grab this weapon, dismantle it, and they can use the legendary Minefield on your primary assault rifle, for example, or your other weapon of choice. If you already completed this mission and did not pick up the Landlubber, they can always do the mission on another character and put that weapon then in your stash, dismantle it on your main character to get the perk that way, or you have to be lucky to get this weapon from other sources. I made a video with way more ways to get legendaries, which I will link to at the end of this one. I highlight a chest in that video, which can give you a guaranteed legendary weapon. I got the Iceberg there. And of course, reaching a new world tier, especially like the later ones, can and give you a guaranteed legendary weapon as well and I got the land lubber from this too so that is possible too and I've said it multiple times before but farming for these world tiers is amazing for these guaranteed legendary items which you can then use or dismantle and now we got an amazing new world tier farm you can do really fast for a ton of XP and I want to thank Raul in the comments under my recent video and Josiah as well for sharing this with me so they're referring to the mission Unknown Presence, which you can start by going to the gate area and then grabbing the quest nearby. So this is from your camp to the nearby mission. And the mission area is actually next to it, which is nice. So go in and then you have to fight a lot of creatures, which you can easily clean, especially solo. And this first area already gives you a ton of world tier XP. You have to be a little more careful though for the final boss in the next area, which can be annoying. But kiting it by using the pillar to block the incoming attacks can totally help. And this is the amount of world tier XP I got from one run. It's pretty crazy, right? So you only have to do this mission a few times for one world tier level. And can do it in like 6 minutes or so. Maybe faster if you got like the right loadout for it. 
So totally try it out if you are looking for a new world tier farm. And in that legendary farm video, we also discussed the hunts and wanted targets. You can of course repeat for a guaranteed legendary after completing all 10 targets and returning to Trench Town. But we first thought that you had to do the final hunt or target on your highest world tier to get all the rewards on that world tier as well after delivering all the like targets and trophies. But turns out, as Wishy notes in the comments, that you can also kill every target on world tier 1 and then before delivering everything in Trench Town, turn the game to the highest world tier, load into a different story point from the lobby, like this point under the first city, very early on is great. It's of course that other world tier farm I talked about before. So if you go here, kill the small enemies on your left hand side when you spawn. And then you can also get the chest after clearing out the area. And then return to Trench Town and you will get all the rewards on that highest world tier. Without having to do a more challenging hunt or target on that world tier. So I think it has to do with just getting one piece of loot on the highest world tier before turning the missions in. Like it works if your first drop is a chest, but we also killed some enemies. So maybe just to be sure, get a chest and kill some enemies as well before turning everything in to Trench Town and then you will get everything on the highest possible world tier. So now this farm is way faster for a guaranteed legendary every time, which is of course great because again, tier 3 perks are amazing. And that will help you a ton when returning to the expeditions because of course in the end that's where it's at. I showed you this image before from Food Bites where you see that the highest possible gear, level 50, is earned in the expeditions, with world tiers only going to 42. So after getting some nice tier 3 perks in the main game, it's important to climb the challenge ranks as much as possible. And of course, we would always be trying to get the gold medal, but actually in the lower challenge tiers, completing a mission on bronze, already raises your level. So missions like the mountain outpost are great because you have 27 minutes to complete it on bronze which will then still raise your level. And I showed you in my previous legendary farm video how you can like do the same expedition over and over again. Again I will link to that video at the end of this one. Overall you want to make sure that you rank up your gear because your item level is really important. Silvox on reddit shared a ton of good tips that I will link to in the video description including this one and we digged a little deeper into it because actually in your stat menu you can see your average item level which is basically your character level as well. So the higher level gear you have, the more max health and anomaly power you have as well. And the increases are really wild. So here for the sake of this video, I'm only wearing lower level items. So my average item level is 42, which gives me 5,400 extra health. I now have 8,600 and 14,577 anomaly power. I now go even lower, as you see, look my health, it goes down to 5,820. But if I equip higher item level gear, I'm a 46 now, then the bonus health and anomaly power almost doubled. Like comparing it to 42, it's insane, this four item levels and this is the increase you get. So the point is that you want to focus a lot on your item level because you get a ton of great increases. But you also do not want to upgrade epic gear. That is not smart because that will cost you a ton of titanium. So it's smarter to go for blue gear on lower level and then upgrading that to your current max. Because this will cost leather or iron which you likely have enough of. And the caps for resource in the game are by the way 999,999. And well, I learned that the hard way because I sold my full inventory when I was already close to that cap, so then I got basically nothing in return. So don't make that mistake. And also you want to focus on dismantling gear instead. Scrap can be nice though to buy titanium. Like again, titanium is super valuable. But dismantling gives you some titanium as well. And also attributes you can spend to further enhance your items. So totally focus on dismantling your items later on instead of selling them. And because of the importance of the item level, playing on the highest possible challenge tier at all times is really smart because then you will always get drops on the highest possible level and that will also, when you're like just getting to this challenge tier, 
increase your level. And again, it's smarter to equip new items on a higher level than to upgrade items to that higher level with some exceptions like amazing legendary weapons like my Inverno Seeds. And there's also this so-called loser chest in Expeditions because of course during runs enemies do not drop any loot but they still should give you loot which you normally get at the end. But if you fail there will be a chest in that sort of starting area and if you open that, you get all the loot you got during that previous run. If you don't open the chest, then you will lose everything with the next run. So make sure that you do that. And you can also get legendaries from this loser chest as Belvin on Reddit notes. So even if you cannot finish this mission on the highest challenge tier, totally try it because you will get higher level gear which in the end makes sure that you are successful. There are some survivability mods that are great to put on your gear to make sure that you don't die that often like rejuvenation is really good and mitigation from death as well. They will make you way more beefier so try and use these perks. The max cap for damage decrease is by the way 85% so having effects go above that won't really help. And overall focusing on a lot of crowd control is also amazing during these expeditions. Like as a devastator I'm using the monolith for example to pull all the enemies towards each other. And then also like if you have freeze from the iceberg perk or for example a technomancer in your team will really really help you deal way more damage. And some other smaller nice tips and shout out to Legacy Gaming for noting these. For example your cooldowns reset when you open a door during the expeditions. So make sure that the person in your team does that with like the longest cooldowns. And also nice that you can break the armor from the ironclads with a melee. So that's also smart. To keep that in mind. And of course if you got more tips then totally share them in the comments. And I might shout you out in the next video. Subscribe for way more Outriders content if you haven't already. A like on the video would really help me out. And you can check out that Legendary Farm video by clicking on the screen. For now I will speak to you next time and goodbye.